Hello and welcome to another edition of Premier League Goats, the show where we delve in, debate and decide on the greatest who've graced the league. And for today's edition, we're turning our attention to the creators, the magicians, the maestros. What a great back heel by Berger. Fortune at his back. Oh. Dennis Bergkamp is in, and that is brilliant. Red Zola, lovely footwork from him. Letizia, brilliant. Great goal. Alan Akenio has scored a beauty here. What a magnificent goal by the Italian. Mesmerising stuff from JJ Akocha. Familiar celebration by JJ. An enormous relief around the Reebok Stadium. What do you say about that? Well, he saw the gap, he's gone through it. Here's the old razzle-dazzle again. Hazard created. And running at Koscielny. Aiden Hazard's gone all the way and scored a beautiful goal. Wonderful footwork from Cole. Oh, gorgeous goal, Joe Cole. We are talking flair players on Goats this week, and I'm joined by Joe Cole and Sean Wright Phillips in the studio, former Chelsea and England teammates, talking about this one. Look, Joe, first up, just yeah. define a flair player for everyone and how we're picking this this week. It's, well, it's got to be someone who can beat a man, but I think it's, it's the ones that the fans, when they when they buy their season ticket or when they turn up at the game, the ones that they want to watch, mm. the ones where the kids are going to replicate, you know, that, that's the player for me. You have to be able, a little bit of, a little bit of something different yeah. you want that all the kids go and watch and they just get excited about. Who had the more flair out of you two, Shawnee? I think I'd say Joe. Oh. No, I honestly, I honestly <laughs> think I would. He thinks I'm like, I'm like, when I, just from a kid, because we've known each other for a long time. Yeah. I'm from South London, he was obviously from East, and we used to meet up in this, weird little tournament in North London. Mm. And it was like, everyone from my side was talking about, oh, Sean Wright Phillips, everyone from his side, it was like Joel Cole. And it was like <laughs> a big rivalry. And we didn't even know each other at that point. But then through the years, we just became good friends. And then when we got to Chelsea, playing with him was just like, it just made it easy. Because the way we could just rotate positions, it was just almost natural. Mm. Like we just played football all our life together. And he just used to do things to get yourself out of situations. And I was like, when I get in that situation, why didn't I think of it that way? <laughs> I always got out of it a, a harder way or a difficult way because of obviously I was a bit quicker. Yeah. So it, it, I would definitely say cold. <laughs> and we'll get to you two later on because, spoiler alert, you are both on, on the shortlist. But what do you need then? You explain what a flair player is. What do you need? What kind of attributes do you have to have? And is it the true sense of a, a footballing artist at work? Yes, it's street football. Like, it, it's the players you, it's the uncoachable stuff that you that you learn to do, and you have to learn to do that like years and years in the playground, in the cage, you know. And for so many years, England, we didn't produce enough of that type of play. You know, like the Brazilian players. You speak to them about how they're growing up. There's no coach standing over them going, "Listen, you need to drag the ball back with hair, use your body weight here, and drop a shoulder here." They just learn it themselves by consistently playing football. But England, we're now producing them. You know, we've seen yeah. it. You know. Mason Mount, Phil Foden, Jack Grealish, Jaden Sancho. We've got so many now and it's great. Mm. But we so when so through them years when we were playing, the foreigners were the ones the the majority of them that come over, the, you know, the Decanios, the Zolas, these types of players. But now we're producing them, which is exciting. Yeah. And Sean, there's always the decision of when to use that flair in a game, when it's appropriate, and the risk <clears> or <throat> reward and the sort of the gain and the gamble side of it. And so, and that's what I was saying to and Coley before when we were just having a little chat. I was saying like there's, for me, there's two types of flair players. You have that flair player mm. that uses that trick, as like you said, to get out of a situation, beat a player and create chances and maybe score one for himself. But yeah. then you have that flair player, like you can say Anthony for Man United, mm. or you can say Martinelli when he done that ball on the back again in the derby game. Yeah. Like some players just do it for the sake of doing it, but then you've got other players that do it with an intention and a purpose. Yeah. And the way we got brought up playing, that's the only time we did a trick, if, if we was going to create a chance from it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise than that, you play the ball simple and keep the ball moving. And, and obviously you have to practice and sort of, you know, to, to be able to pull off the tricks that you two did and you, you had flair coming out of your ears, both of you. But are you born with it or can you coach it? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know if you're... You're definitely not born with, with it, but you're born with maybe like a creative spark. So 
that football was just an outlet for me. Like, I wasn't, it wasn't like, I used to, when I used to get a ball as a kid, I'd be like, what can I do with this? No, what can I do? Can I hit that crossbar with a right foot, with a left foot? Can I juggle the outside of my, my boot? And I just used to get lost for hours. Mm. And I think certain people, there's certain types of players, you've got the fullback, they're like, they're, they're that type of mentality where they want to be structured and rigid. All flair players have a certain type of personality, I feel, where you're a little bit, you know, you have, you're have a bit creative, you can be a bit loose, you know, yeah. forgetting things and, you know, like that. I think it's your personality so that you, comes So that's out. a good point because in terms yeah. of what we're selecting this on today, you know, goats, Premier League flair players, mm. you, you kind of that you have to have the personality as yeah. well as the trickery, right? Yeah. Because there are some on this list that I'm going to say to you at the end, why are they not there? Well, there's, 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 it's, we had to narrow the list down. It yeah. was really enjoyable going through and thinking about the type of player that you're going to put in. But for me, a flair player, the, the main thing yeah, for me is that they have to put have to put bums on seats yeah. and get bums off of seats when they're playing. That's okay. the So I'm excited for this. Right. Well, let's get started because we talk about personality and we talk about bums on seats and we talk about Paolo Di Canio yeah. first up, someone that you played with yeah. at, at West Ham. Just sell the Paolo oh. Di Canio argument to everyone, Joe. Well, Paolo was the epitome of a flair player, an entertainer. A ma he was a maverick, complete crazy off the pitch. Like it's, Before you even consider him on the pitch, off the pitch, he had his troubles in Italy. Mm. He went to Scotland, done really well. Then he had his problems at Sheffield Wednesday. And when he turned up, and Harry said to me, you're going to really enjoy playing. Paolo. And I did. I loved it. He helped me so much. And I think I helped him because I was playing in the midfield and he was sort of playing loose, like a number, like a number 10, effectively, second striker. Mm -hmm. And, and I, would, I would go and get the ball in dangerous areas and get out and drive through the lines mm. and give it to him. And he would just, I'd be able to give him the ball in the final third. But he, was, he had this ability, this magic where... And it frustrated a lot of the players. I love playing with him, but a lot of players, he would frustrate because he'd go down the line, he'd go to cross it, he'd chop, he'd come back, he'd chop again, and the striker would be in there, go, when's it coming, when's it coming? Mm. But when it did come, it landed usually right on their head and they'd bang it away. But he was just an unbelievably talented player. Mm. Both footed, couldn't run, slow. Like you wouldn't, like nowadays, trying to liken him to a player, I don't think there's a type of player like that. He literally, was one of the slowest players I've ever played with, but he could beat a man with his just intelligence and his feet. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, he was the scorer, Sean, of special goals. And the goal we remember against Wimbledon is probably one of the greatest in Premier League history, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely up there, but just I remember seeing that on Match of the Day. And obviously now with technology, it's completely different. You could just rewind it yourself. Mm. But on Match of the Day, you didn't get that many views of it. So you was always trying to see it again. And as a kid, you was always trying to emulate doing that. Yeah. Like the ball come across being out because it's harder to do it that way. You could understand if he took that with his left foot, mm. but he's taken it with a scissor kick in the air yeah. with the outside of his right. And exactly where he wants the ball to go is pretty much exactly where he put it. And that just shows you his characteristic. Do you know we're talking about, is it coachable? Mm. There's no coach on, on, in a world football, coaching young players would say, look, as it comes over, do that. take it on the, on the front. And by the way, that wasn't, that wasn't by luck. He used to do that all the time. So I've he would seen... practice that, would he, in training? I didn't see him actually practice it, but in, you know how games go. Yeah. He would. He scored two or three goals like that in training. Yeah. Not as good as that, mind. Yeah. But if the ball would come over, he'd always take it. He'd meet it first. I think speaking to him about it. Look at that. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. But I think speaking to him about it, he said, he said a lot of what goalkeepers when they set themselves, they set themselves from the body shape. The good mm. goalies, they'll look at your body shape, and naturally they'll take up their position. Whereas Paolo, he's jumping in the air. They're thinking, and they're trying to take. Their, but the, the, where their positioning is off of the back of him volleying mm. it, they don't. It's up in the air, and then he's hitting it early across it. So it's just incredible skill that was unique to him. I don't, I've not seen any other player I've played with who was able to do that like him. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's one of those you talked about kids playing on the street. That is something that kids yeah. would have been trying for months and for years. I mean, I remember being at school and watching that, and thinking, yeah. "How has he done that?" See, see, kids all over it. So he would have probably been at some point in his life with his mates, and just for fun, they'd probably been hours and hours on the streets clipping mm. the ball up and all of them trying to do it. I bet there's four or five fellas in, from Rome where he's from who could, maybe not as good as him, but could probably do that yeah, volley yeah. just as well. <laughs> he scored a cracker against your old team Chelsea as well. I mean, there's so many goals. But, I mean, look, what about this one, Sean, as well? Remember this one? Right. This, this is 2002 in a 3-2 win for West Ham. Yes, at the I bridge. remember but, it. <laughs> what about but, that? But, and that's where I think Joe talks about him in the sort of stuff he could do. He mm. knows there he can't beat anybody for pace. Yeah but he knows what he can do better. 
Like, a lot of people wouldn't try that. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's the audacity, it, right? Yeah, the, the audacity to take it with one foot and hit it with the other foot. Mm. But, you know, it's the same as in the first goal. If you watch how he's done both of them, mm. whether it's in the air or on the ground, it's all within his stride. Yeah. He doesn't break stride mm. for any of it. And that, that kills defenders because mm. by the time they've moved, the ball's already gone because he's not taken that extra touch. It, everything he's done is perfect to doing the end product. And mm. he's, look what he achieves from it. And personality oozing, because mm. he was just so fiery and so passionate, wasn't he? Mm. Um, so, look, another player we're going to move on and talk about, uh, an ex-Chelsea player, a Chelsea legend. In fact, Joe Cole signed Eden Hazard for Chelsea. That is a true story. <laughs> when you were at Lille, you saw him and said, you've got to sign this kid. Still waiting for the percentage. <laughs> in the post, but it's still not come. Maybe one day. I mean, special. You guys didn't play with him. But, I played but... with him. Oh, you did? Yes, you I did. played with him at Lille. You yeah, did I Lille. played with him. No, sorry, apart from I mean, the Premier League. Yeah. In the Premier League, I didn't play with him. But, um, right, like, right. By that stage of my career, I played with some greats and giants yeah. of the game. Yeah. And then when I signed for Lille, the manager, Rudy Garcia, pulled me aside and said, look, I'm going to play you off the left because we got this number 10 and he was 19 at the side. And, he's, mm. and I'm like, okay. Like, why not I play in there? He went, no, he said, we, we, we build the team around him. I'm like, okay. Then the front, I thought, next day we trained, signed the contract, trained with him. The first day of training, I was just blown away by what he could do. Mm. He was the most talented footballer I've, I've worked with. He could go right, left foot, free kicks. And, he, and, and when, when he was asking me, because at that time all clubs in Europe were courting him, and I, I said, listen, I, I think Chelsea's the place for you to go. You know, I knew he was a home lad. I knew he, you know, you can get on the Eurostar back to Belgium. Mm. Of that. And he, anyway, he chose Chelsea. He could have gone anywhere in the world and he'd become an absolute club legend. And, and already we've got a bit of a debate because he doesn't scream personality, does he? Tell me if I'm wrong, you know, particularly when we stand him next to Paolo Di Canio. So he, he purely was based on what he was doing on the pitch. Yeah, but, but that is his personality. Mm. Like, I think there's so many ways in football that you can show and express your personality. Mm. And I think that was just Eden's way of doing it. Yeah. Mm. I think for a winger, especially like me and Joel coming mm. to an end and the wingers coming through, if you want to emulate or play in that attacking role position, mm. for me, he was one of the best people to watch and show you how to affect the game going forward. It didn't matter who he played against, he could do the same thing to literally anybody. And even this girl that look, there's no room there. That like he had to set that out so wide to do what he wanted to do. But just his his directness and the way he just pushes people off the ball and still yeah does the trickery, it, it was scary. That one, the Battle of the Bridge, Joe, remember that and stopping yeah. Tottenham winning the league, 2016. Outstanding. Outstanding. And, and we talk about personality, doesn't mean you have to be, you have to be like a laughing joke. He had a personality in the sense that he played for fun. There was no, he'll say himself, he's not, he wasn't a professional, you know, in the sense that, he, you know, he did it, that's a street footballer there. And one thing that, Di Canio was a flair player and Eden was what I call a world-class flair player yeah. in the sense that he did it at the very highest stage. You know, World Cups, Champions League, mm. Eden's done it. You know, whereas Di Canio was like a, 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 a local icon, if you like, but he had much more speed than Paolo. He had much more strength. He had everything in his locker. But he did have the personality. He was, he was himself. He didn't conform. Like, you know, we play with them players. They can frustrate managers. Mm. They'll be like, late. They'll be not really interested in this, you know. Mm. He would never track back. All the things that managers want in their group, he wouldn't do, but he did it with a smile on his face. He's a, he had a humility to him, mm. but he knew what he was. He was a street footballer and a, a, the most talented player I've played with. And we've also got the element, just thinking about Eden Hazard, of actually, because he carried Chelsea for years, didn't yes. he, as well? He, they, you don't often rely on your flair players. You know, flair mm. players can perform sometimes if they do great. Yeah. Sort of, he. It was all about him, wasn't it, at Chelsea at one yeah, point? But that was, it, that I think, at the time when Chelsea were relying on him, that was the great thing, is the fact that Chelsea trusted in him. Mm. He trusted in what he could mm. do. So as soon as they were in those attacking positions, whether it was at the halfway line or at the edge of the box, that's the man they was looking to. Yeah. Um, they was trying to get it to him as quick as possible so that when he does get the ball, he's got enough room to manoeuvre. Yeah. And why did he not let anybody down with that? Like, that, he was phenomenal. Yeah, so there we go. We've gone to Canio and we've gone Hazard. Plenty more to come. That's all we've got time for in uh, part one. After the break, though, we're going to continue our search for the greatest flair player in the Premier League. And we're going to look at the likes of Henri Ronaldo and Mr Gianfranco Zola. See you in three minutes. Welcome back to GOATS. We're talking flair players. Joe Cole and Sean Wright Phillips in the studio. Let's move on and talk about the great Matt 
Letizia. What does Matt Letizia mean to you? You grew up watching him. You did he play with him? Uh, a few I played years? against him yeah, against a few him. times. What? Yeah, he was just like he was a maverick. You know, he had these back in them days. It seemed like everyone had a type of player that was like a flair player in their team. Mm. But Matt was like the king of the flair players of his generation. The collection of goals will stand up next to anybody. Mm -hmm. He could strike the ball off both feet. He, Another one like the Canio couldn't mm. run, couldn't play into the modern era today because you, you wouldn't, he wouldn't have had a yard of pace. But when you see goals like this, I remember this goal. Like on these he, pitches, Joe. On these pitches, where the people had the ability to smash him when they wanted at will, their vision and whipped it in. He's just, just sensational. And this one, right? You look at this. Yeah, and I remember <laughs> it, we used to give him a nickname where I grew up. We used to call him the paintbrush because yeah. he was so good at volleying the ball. Yeah. He, it, it, there's never no power in it. He didn't potentially hit it. He just stroked through it. But, and he's just he was just phenomenal. The, 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 the way he... Look at that touch there. Back then, you never really saw that. Not not from there. That's like a Burkham, Burkham sort of touch. Yeah. And he, he used to just do things like that all the time. Some of his strikes, up chip. Yeah. It was unbelievable. It was called Le God, wasn't it? Le God. By the Southampton fans. I mean, was he one of the most underrated English players? Well, the is it, is it, we're, we're looking at flair players. Like, I think Matt himself... But I put him in the bracket where I put the Canio in. Like, I don't think he would have... Sat, his personality was so strong. I don't think he would have sacrificed himself for a team. Hence the reason why I think he's, you know, Southampton, he stayed. He, he never went to Manchester United or mm. Liverpool or something. Or Arsenal at the time. He just sort of... He wanted to play his way and he could Southampton afforded him that the team was around him but so as terms of like I won't put him as the top 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 echelons of players because yeah. it's more to it than just flair but flair players he's as good as anyone because of the goals because of the skills because of everything but full package he, he falls short but just flair there ain't yeah. many but, but had the talent to have yeah. played for a team that was going for the title right mm -hmm. Like, I have to go back to what Joe said. I don't, I wouldn't say he never had the talent. He may not have fit in there because he wasn't going to change the person yeah. or the, the, his playing style to suit any other team. Mm -hmm. And that's why it worked so well with him at Southampton because Southampton knew that. So mm -hmm. they adjusted everything they did around him mm -hmm. and it, it, it worked for him. And when it came to Flair, he didn't let you down. You've seen mm -hmm. some of the goals, some of the, the things he's seen. Like, I've had conversations with my dad and I'm like, I used to shoot, but there was times where I was like, how did you know the keeper was offline there? Because a lot of things are instincts. Mm. And you can see Matt had a look before he's even got to the ball. Mm. So by the time he gets to the ball, he already knows what he's doing. And he, everything he tried, he pretty much executed. Yeah. Yeah, and look, they, they, they played to his strengths, didn't they, Southampton? Mm. Because they were a team that were always kind of just punching to be there on the cusp and then obviously later in his career staying to fighting to sort of stay in the Premier League. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's what he was. And, and mm. again, the, pe the people on the South Coast... Yeah, he is a god. Look, mm. god is the right word for me. Like, he is. <laughs> like, for you go down there and you talk about Matt Letizia in that town, and he's given them so much joy. Yeah. And flair players are there to give joy. There's certain clubs that are not going to win respectfully. They're not going to win the Premier League. Then they're not going to win trophies. They might get to a final once a decade or mm. once every twenty years. So these people, they pay their money and they. They want to be entertained. They paid to go and see Latisse. And they, if anyone at that ground when he scored that goal, that is a massive memory in their life because yeah. it was just a work of art, the one where he's lifted it up over the player. and that. So that's what you have to remember. Football's winning and losing, but it's also creating entertainment. Memories. Yeah, creating yeah. memories. As yeah. Well. And what people are talking about a couple yeah. of decades yeah. on, which is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so moving on to our next candidate, Shawnee. So good they named him twice. Who are we talking about? J.J. Okocha. J.J. Okocha. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about J.J. Okocha, sure. I used to play against him a lot, obviously, being in Manchester mm. and Bolton and stuff like that. Um, but he basically, in a way, epitomises everything what Joe's been saying through the show about cage football and mm. street football. It, it didn't matter where he was on the pitch. Yeah. He wanted to get bums on the edge of the seat. He wanted to entertain. He wanted to make people have a lot of memories. And the step over, I feel like for me in the Premier League, it was the first real person mm. that I saw bring stuff like that to the Premier League and just do whatever he wanted. Basically be a free spirit on the pitch at all times, even in the wrong areas. Yeah. And he always seemed to get away with it. And 
he could finish as well, which was it is beautiful. Yeah, and that feint as well. He was the king of the feint and the step over, wasn't he? I mean, look, yeah, Joey had four years at Bolton and had come from PSG. And you know, mm. at the time, Bolton, obviously Sam Allardyce had got them up there and playing yeah. European football, and they had Ivan Campo and Jorge and all sorts of players like that, didn't they? But he he was a very quickly a fan's favourite. Paris to Bolton, that's a change in culture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he uh, again, he's a player. He's a player that he found his home. Similar like to De Canio at West Ham, he found a home. His big Sam got hold of him, and Sam recognised that he, he had a lot of certain types of player, and he gave him he, he give the team that little bit of flair. Mm. Like Letizia at Southampton, he had players around him who would work and hustle and run and, and win the ball back, and then JJ would get in it, just give that little mm. bit of art, artistry, and um, it was like right, he's right, he's spot on. He's like he's just. He's one of the first ones that brought that real, that real showmanship to football and to the Premier League. Mm. And, and I think considered by many to be the greatest Nigerian player of all time. We obviously we've got a massive African audience. That's yeah. throwing that one in there as a, as a debate, a little grenade in there. But you know, he, he he was one of those that you kind of thought, I just wish he'd come ten years earlier mm. to the Premier League. You imagine him in his early twenties doing what he could do. I mean, he, and again, someone that could have played for a top four Champions League team in the Prem. Yeah, I think he came out for me at. The perfect time. Mm. Personally, I think maybe if we got him a bit earlier, we wouldn't have had a JJ. Yeah. We got to love and enjoy it. And I think the fact that you said he's the biggest Nigerian player there was, you have to understand when he finished retired, for him to still be rated as that actually shows you how good he was, how many memories he gave people, mm. and how many people still speak about him now. Mm. Like he he was he 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 made me love being a winger. Because I'd watch him when I was coming through the ranks and I'd be like, wow, he didn't just do that. Yeah. He builds confidence for young wingers to be like, if you're in a yeah, situation, yeah. try to get out of it. You mm. don't always have to pass. Because if you get out of it, you're away, basically, mm. and anything can happen from them. And I guess when you're trying to mark a flair player, that's a whole mm. different dynamic as well. Because you know they've got that in their locker. You know you don't want to be made a fool mm. of. You know he's got that step over and that feint and he could just make you look silly. Yeah, he would strike fear into to players in midfield. Yeah. Like, I played against him in midfield and uh, many, many times. And he, uh, you know, you knew, he was very strong, by the way, as well. So you knew if yeah. you got too close, he just had that ability to just roll past you and he'd be at you. He'd be at the back four. He is like, he'd get, to be the, to be the like, recognised as the best Nigerian player of all time, what an achievement. Because mm. Nigeria is a huge country with a massive footballing history. We've had many great, great players. Mm. And still we're talking about JJ Okocha. Yeah. Right, let's move on. Our next candidate, Joe Cole, is not Joe Cole. We'll do that later. <laughs> Thierry Henry. <laughs> Thierry Henry. Now, Thierry Henry. So, is... so why does he scream flair for you? Explain that. Well, first of all, he scream... he... he's probably the best player in the Premier League's ever seen. Um, full I... stop. Full stop. I, in my opinion, he took it by storm. But and it just in the category of flair, mm. he he done things. He's got back heels, holding off players. I remember we played a game against him at West Ham and they was at their absolute pomp, the, mm. the Arsenal team. And at one point he's received the ball and, it, and he just, he's doing kick-ups, running, holding two centre-halves yeah, off. I remember that. And I was just like, this guy's not something else. But he, had, but he had the full package. He had mm. speed, strength, personality, grace, and he could do things like this. I, I absolutely loved him, loved to watch him. It was almost as if football was too easy for him, right? But it was. In his head, honestly, it was. He used to... Like, he knows exactly what he's doing there. Mm. Like, he, he copes his people into thinking, oh, you're going to get the ball. He already knows he's beating you. And I learned that lesson very, very quickly. Because I remember playing against him with Man City. I wasn't slow. And I remember chasing him down the line. And I'm like, right, I'm right beside him now. I've done the hard part. All I need to do is tackle him. As soon as I've gone to tackle, it's almost like he dropped it into second gear. Yeah. And then by the time I landed, he was gone. Like he just, he, he, he just so clever at making believe people and defenders believe that they have a chance here mm. when they don't have any chance. Mm -hmm. When he went to Red Bulls, my brother said to me, Sean, Thierry, it's, it's hard to deal with him. I said, what do you mean? He's, he's just TT, you know him, you've got the same age mm -hmm. and... Blah, 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 you get on just fine. He said, but bro, what he does in training is, is not normal. He shouts at everybody and he says, all you have to do is do it like this. And then he would just go and do it. And that's even when he was at his late stages. Yeah. He can just unfold the game in his head and it almost feels like he knows what 
every defending player is going to do before he does it. Mm. So he just goes the opposite direction. Yeah. It, it, that, that's unbelievable for me. Joe, it's worth seeing that Spurs goal again, isn't it? Because again, you, you said earlier, didn't you, about the tens of thousands of people that go home and talk about this for, mm. for decades. Yeah, I mean, this is you know, the, the biggest stage for the Tottenham and Arsenal fans, the derby. But they're just at the time, sitting down, it's almost like he's in control of the situation at pace. Look, putting Stephen Carr away there, Ledley in the wrong position, and then that left foot finish is just lovely. That's Because that is... He's had to put a bit of a bit of pace on that, you know, because he because of Ray's body shape. So he's changed it from an instep to like a, a, to the full strike. That's like, unbelievable finish. Yeah, and and really this flair sort of started on the wing because when he was at Monaco, when he was at Juventus, mm. we, we have to credit Arsene Wenger really for sticking him down the middle of the pitch, mm. um, and and still being able to have that pl flair as a mm. as a nine and a half, a ten, whatever he was, because he wasn't an outright nine, was no, he? No, and do you know what as well, he, he found his home because. He had if Pires, another one who, who nearly, nearly made the, the list. Yeah. Pires, Burkamp, Omri, they shared it. He didn't play centrally, just that was it. Mm. Sometimes he'd pop in there, sometimes he'd go out, Pires would come in. There's so much movement and fluidity. And, and that great Arsenal team, that just sort of changed how we thought mm. we could attack because we're all overlapping, underlapping movements. It's a great team to watch. Yeah, 175 Premier League goals across eight seasons is just incredible. And look, you don't get a statue outside... The Emirates, do you? Unless you're the elite of the elite. And he was voted mm. Arsenal's greatest ever player by their fans. So we have to mm. believe that. Um, on to CR7, Mr Cristiano Ronaldo. Sean, you had many <laughs> battles against him. Um, where do we start with, with Ronaldo? I, I definitely understand why, why we put him in the list, Joe. I think what I think I love about him so much is he made himself a flair player. Mm -hmm. um, I think you see natural talents like your JJ Okocha's, are all around, but I know through obviously his teammates how hard he worked to be able to do the step overs he wanted to so do. So you say naturally he wasn't that he was. An I, athlete. I wouldn't he say was, I wouldn't yeah. say he wasn't naturally, but I'd say he he wasn't gifted as you say like a Messi or someone like that. Mm -hmm. Messi just looked like he woke up in the morning and he could just do that. Whereas I think Ronaldo has worked hard all his career to do what he's doing. Mm -hmm. On his days off, he used to go in. He used to practice, watch YouTube, practice all these tricks. And what I love about him, some people practice tricks and don't do them. He actually sets the defender up in games to do that trick that he's practiced mm -hmm. and then get away with it and score goals. Yeah. Like that's, that's a sign of hard work. And I, I, I just love the, the showmanship mm -hmm. from him. I think, I think he was fantastic, especially after his first year in the Premier League, you saw everything come out then. Mm. <laughs> and, and to think of that skinny little kid that rocked up at Old Trafford in 2003 and what he, he gave the Premier League Joe over those years. Yeah, incredible. I mean, you have to put, put aside the sort of Cristiano the last five years has become a number nine. I'm thinking the early Cristiano, that kid, the next three years where he was picking the ball up deep, mm. driving past players, left foot, right foot, free kicks. The first one I see hit that ball and make it move in the air. Outstanding player and well-deserved on the list. Mm. We talk about stepovers from JJ. Yeah, <laughs> Did he take the step over to another level, Cristiano Ronaldo? Because the defenders, again, they were made to look silly because there were sometimes maybe five, six, seven, eight stepovers and they just still didn't know which direction he was going to go at the end of it. Yeah, but that's why back early on the show, I'd say there's a different sort of type of flair. Yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo had both. He could do them stepovers and go past somebody mm. and then he would do those stepovers and do a flick and pass it back to his defender. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody does that, like now in this football, when I'm watching a game, I'm like, why would you do that? Mm. But that's that different sort of flair. And that's what was good about him. Sometimes he will do that. And then sometimes the defender thinks he's going to do that. Yeah. But this time he's just gone past him and he's either created a chance, created a goal or scored himself. Mm. So for me, flair wise, he, he deserves to be right at the top as well. Well, and Sir Alex did say, Joe, that he is the most gifted player that, that he ever managed, that he ever coached. And there were a hell of a lot of players that were in the list of candidates for that. Yeah, that's, that's massive. That's a massive honour. Yeah. Sir Alex Ferguson has seen, seen as many top players as anyone mm. in the world, I would imagine. And to say Cristiano comes out on top, I can't really argue with that. Mm. I think he, I say Henri's the best. In the Premier League, I've seen he would be a close number two. And obviously, if we'd had his prime years in the Premier League, yeah. he would be number one. We went, obviously went to Real Madrid and, and done what he'd done there, but what, what a player. Well, I like this because you've already said that Henri's the greatest ever Premier League player yeah. and Ronaldo's number two. But again, if we're just picking on Flair, they might not even be on your podium when we get to, to pick your, your number one, but don't give it away yet. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we, to our, to our next player. 
Um, and we're going to talk about Gianfranco Zola. And mm. look, Joe, I'll, I'll come to you first on this, just because you, when you arrived at the bridge, I know mm. you weren't a, a replacement for him in terms of positionally on the pitch, but yeah. he was certainly a, a replacement in terms of the flair that they were missing yeah. because Zola had left Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, the fans loved him. When he arrived, he cut, if you know his story, you know, he was Maradona's understudy mm. in Naples. He, he, he played in Italy, and at that time they had Mancini, they had... Signori, they had Baggio, they had loads of number 10s. It was like the breeding ground for number 10s and, mm. and the flair player. And he was the afterthought. And he came to England, again, found his home. He, he just, the, the, on the King's Road, he just settled in. He just he scored goals. And we never seen anything like it. I was at this game. Look what he does to Dixie here. Look, puts him in the oven. There, he's, he's cooked him. <laughs> he's just absolute beauty. Like, just beauty, touch. And you have to remember how small he was, right? Right. Time, in this time, time in football, yeah. nowadays it doesn't matter because no one can tackle you. Yeah. Them days, he had to, he had, to, he technically had to be so good to get away from people. There, and this is against quality Man United sides. Look, that little touch there, the extra touch just to get away. That's messy, like. That's how old I am. I was at that game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like black and white, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? When you watch it back. I like that one there. Look, that That's cool. oh, division, that division. Incredible. Outside, I, I mean, it, you, you can see Maradona in him, can't you? Mm. And, and, and did he used to tell you those stories, Joe? And, 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 I've, you know, I've worked you with him the since. Later. I, I played against him and I've worked with him since. And, you know, I'm always picking his brains about yeah. the great Diego. And for, for, for Franco to say what a player Diego was, mm. it just blows your mind. Because I look at Franco and he's just, just incredible what he could do in football. Mm. It was the panache. Sean, wasn't it, as well, that he had. And, and, and interesting that you said earlier about J.J. Kocha, like he came at the right time, because Gianfranco Zola had a decade in Serie A before he came to Chelsea, and they were still like his twilight years, really, mm. weren't they? You know, we didn't see him in his sort of early 20s. Uh, but that, I, I have to say, that's, that's sometimes the good thing, mm. like for a player, especially like Zola, to, to come into England after 10 years and still want to be that sort of player. Yeah. Like he could have gone there and changed the way he completely he played, but... Like we've always said, when you're that flair player, you you have to get people on the edge of the seas. Mm. When I played or when Joel played, we didn't see it at so much as creating. We saw it as entertaining, making people enjoy football. We mm. laughed. I've been, I've been nutmegged by somebody in a game and I've, I've wanted to smile. Football is supposed <laughs> to be enjoyable. Yeah. And when you watch Zola play, he makes you enjoy it even though, as if so is you doing, doing yeah. that. And that's all fans want. Yeah. Like keep me on the edge of my seat and I'll keep buying my season and ticket. Zola's a great example of that, isn't it? Of that, that uncertainty. And we just saw in those clips there how the holes and the situations that he ended up getting out of. And you just think, everyone's you, you watch him because you don't know what's going to happen and that's what's so fascinating. Un uncoachable. The way he'd done to Liverpool there, like when he's wriggling out of places. Against world-class footballers in the hardest league in the world. <clears throat> in that era in particular, where physicality was embraced, it was... It was Put above everything else, really. You know, mm. defenders could kick you out of the game. They could, they could, you know, physically. You know, the balls, the pitches weren't great. For and for him to perform in that era and do the things he did with his stature, yeah, is an incredible achievement. Would you two try and take things from Zola? And I know I've spoken oh, yeah. to you, Joe, before. And you, you know, Gascoigne used to watch videos yeah. of Gascoigne and watch him live and think, well, I want a piece of Paul in that sense. Yeah. But Zola, there must have been bits in your yeah. game. Yeah, like. and that's another thing that we need to mark a flair player on. Now, our kids go into school the next day after watching it, trying to do what they've done at the weekend. Yeah. And that's why we, we're doing it. We've got a show about them. You know, no mm. one goes to school on a Monday morning and go, let's do some defensive headers. Or let's, you know, <laughs> let's do some five-yard passes or, or, or let's shut down really well. They go there and they go, well, did you see the... Yeah. I, remember, I remember going to school, did you see what Letizia done? Did you see what Franco Zola done? Did you see what Ian Wright done? And I'm like, I want to try it. You're trying yeah. it in the playground. And that's what sparks... That's what, that is the beauty in football, that. Yeah, well, there we go. And plus, because he's Italian, Zola, he's just cool. So yeah, he's just higher up the list cool. anyway, isn't he? Cool. Uh, right, time for another quick break. When we return, we will finally be looking at the credentials of these two gentlemen sitting alongside me in the studio. Joe Cole, Sean Wright Phillips coming next. Welcome back to Flair Players. We're talking goats, we're talking Sean Wright Phillips and we're talking Joe Cole. And we move on before we get stuck into your bios, uh, to Dennis Burkamp. Wow. I mean, we, we could just leave it there, couldn't we? Yeah. You, we just need to say his name, Joe. Yeah, he's... Uh, getting, we were just talking just off air. We remember him getting some stick from the fans when yeah. he first came. He had a slow start. Uh, get, uh, similar to Letizia, he, uh, 
his his career, he he, he sort of he, he played as a nine, he played as a ten, he mm. played off the left, he played off the right again, and he he come into Arsenal and he found his home, he settled in, and the goals. I remember this is a hat trick against Leicester. Mm. This goal here, the the control mm. that just a plum, just put him down. It just look that touch there. See these touch, they're all purposeful. Yeah. Everything's purposeful. Everything he does, and he was strong. He was so strong. You know, he could. He had vision. He'd find people. He was just a great, great player. Was it one of the, did he have one of the best first touches you've ever seen? I'd say yeah, until Riyad Mahrez. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, if, um, for me, Dad used to tell me a lot about him. I used to watch a lot of calls. But, mm. but like, he he was a different sort of flair player and entertainer. Yeah, we never really saw him do like step overs and that many Cruyff turns. He used to be able to just drop his shoulder on somebody yeah. and go past them in slow motion like he had all the time in the world mm. to think and do what he wanted But he could also do. put a 40-yard pass on the head of an eagle, couldn't he? And for me, that is what made him so special as a number 10. Mm. He wasn't just entertaining. The passes and the vision that he saw, mm. he kind of made that number 10 a new way of playing it. Mm. It was more creative than as like a, a third striker. It was mm. more about creating chances for everybody else as well as himself. And yeah. I, I did, he, was, he was so lovely to watch. He was a special footballer. Yeah, 11 seasons in North London. I mean, he goes down in Arsenal folklore, doesn't he? And yeah. Arsenal Invincible as well. Let's, let's look at the Leicester goal again, Joe. Yeah, I, I love this. And there were some great goals in this game. But he'd done this at the World Cup. If we have to remember, this is not like just once in a career. This is like, look, control, that one there. Did Four against, touches. Against Argentina, didn't he? Oh, like you got, if you slow this down, the first touch, right, which he just kills it, and then the second one, he knows he needs to just be a little bit there, and then this one here, bang, just to get it on his right foot, mm. and he knows he needs to lift the finish. Yeah. What a player. Yeah. In fact, on, on record, him Arsenal Zidane, which is a great description, really, isn't <laughs> it? Yeah. What put the icing on the cake with that is his goal against Newcastle. Yeah. Mm. That, that I, that I still, to this day, yeah. don't know how he got the ball to spin back mm. into his path. So he just opens it up. Like mm. He knows exactly what he's doing and exactly where the defender is when this happens. Everyone thought it was a fluke. Yeah. You don't know where the ball is that quickly if it's a fluke. Nah. He knew exactly what he's doing. It gave him so much time to get back around and open up and use his right foot. Yeah. Normally, you're meant to take that with your left foot. Why, why is that a debate, Joe? Did he mean it? Didn't he mean it? Why, with a player like that? I just, it can't be a debate. I think there's probably about three players in world football at this time. Zidane, Burkham and, and maybe a, one other, but who you could look at and go, he meant that. Yeah. But he, he did. He, he, he put the ball there. Right, right, he said, he spun around. He knows where the ball's going before. It's not like he's turned around and reacted and shown a bit of reaction to it. He just mm. put it there. Nigo Stabazas got, got the strong arm and then he just opened his body up. Great finish. Yeah. I mean, look, we talked about that De Canio goal earlier against Wimbledon, potentially one of the greatest Premier League goals. I mean, that is, that is up there in the top three, isn't it? The Newcastle one. In yeah, terms but, of the, just the audacity and the intricacy of it. But I don't think he's ever practised that. I no. think he, that's just instinct. Yeah. Like, that's just, right, I know he's going to do this, I think this can work. Well, that's an artist at his work. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have that. For me, that would be up there as one of the top Premier League mm. goals. Joe Cole, next on the list. Mm. Like, Sean, you tell me, what was Joe Cole's best trick, best bit of flair? What, what, did, what scared you the most when you came up against Joe? Um, that stupid Maradona dream <laughs> that he does. Because <laughs> you think you're good, close enough to get it. Yeah. But effectively, you're not. He wants you to think that. And as soon as you go... He's already gone. <laughs> but he's, his favourite trick he did, I think for me, was against United when it was at Chelsea, where he just kept dragging it back, dragging it back, the both defenders come, and he just kind of lifted it a little bit, went through, yeah. and stuck it in the back of the net. This is when I said he's awake. <laughs> 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 this is Joe. This is what I saw every day in training yeah. at, at, at Chelsea. He would just destroy people on a daily basis. So, yeah, I mean, it's, this is... It's, it's that funny was... watching it now. It's just like, you know, I, I, never, I, I never actually set out to, like... Everything I tried to do was with purpose. And it was street football. That, that's, that, like, it's just the street... I'm a street footballer at heart. I wasn't coached as a kid. Um, the difference with me and Wrighty, Wrighty was electric. You can run past players. Yeah. I wasn't as quick. So I always had to sort of, like, find a way. Just, just, and it had to be... I had to try and... Be, in, be 
clever and intricate. I never had the option. Whereas Wrighty had that, yeah. but Wrighty had the option to just drop a shoulder and go past Don't someone. Don't big him up yet. He's going to get his I know, time. I know. Bigging you up. <laughs> no, but I wanted to ask you, because you, you said it about Burkamp there, was a lot of the stuff that you did in pro and things that you haven't tried before. It was just an yeah, instinct that you thought, yeah. I'm going to give it a go. Can't, you can't, the cages, the streets, like my, my um, I, 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 I wasn't coached. Really, yeah. I've never played a competitive game until I was nearly 10. Like when I was started playing against Wrighty, I was mm. just straight off of the streets, in the cages, mm. all day and all night, and you'd be playing against kids twice the size they are, stronger than you are, and mm. you just have to find ways, and by rep repetition, you're in a position where there's, there's only a way out there, and you have to drop a shoulder, go with the left foot, go with the right foot, and get out. And that all comes down. But I think there's more players like, like me now from England. I don't know what it is, what we're doing in the coaching, or whether kids mm. are just taking it on themselves. Or whether there's been like um, an explosion of flair players and now we're seeing the English players do it. But mine yeah. was just, yeah, it was just, I would say self-taught, like yeah. in, the, in, the, in, in the streets of London. Yeah, love that. And look, um, one of my great young Joe Cole memories is against Roy Keane. Yeah. Well, I don't know what you were saying to, to Roy <laughs> to wind him up. But it wouldn't have been nice. That was I, think, I think these days he, VAR would have had a little look at his elbow on you here. And yeah. this, this is a straight red card, isn't yeah. it, Joe? Yeah. Oh, look, didn't even get booked for that, I think. No, but... Look at the revenge. He comes in for you. Good night. Yeah, that's, that's a, a little move from the streets. <laughs> and I work, with Roy, I work with Roy now and I, I get on really... But that was football What did he say then. to you after that? That's what I want to know. I think <laughs> that's best not on the show. <laughs> but, um, but that's, for me, I work with Roy and I really get on with him. And, but that's the difference in football. Now, when we was playing, players had the ability. That was just one mm. that was caught on camera. That was all the time. And also the tackles. And so we dealt with a lot more physicality, yeah. you know, and we're not, you know, I'm taller than righty. But, <laughs> but, but I'm not <laughs> big in stature. Me and him were always the smallest on the pitch. So yeah. we had to be clever. We had to be... Did you like the attention? Did you like the showboating? I, do you know what? It's, I did it naturally. I wouldn't, as a person, I, I'm not... You know, I'm not like a flamboyant person. You know, I'm quite, you know, I'm quite w within myself in that sense. But on the pitch, I suppose I did like to, I knew that I could do things that other players couldn't do. Mm. So I wanted to show that. Yeah. But off the pitch, I'm, I'm not a decanio, if you like, or anything like that. I like to have fun. Yeah. Uh, and I like to, but my personality, I don't think actually matched my style of play. Yeah. And look, I think you have to be a very decent flair player to have a haircut like this, Joe. <laughs> you know where this one's going. Uh, what did he say to the barber there? Well, that's, a, that's another story. That's, um, <laughs> that was one day I had the haircut, by the way, and it's haunted me ever since. <laughs> you know, I needed, I needed the, uh, the internet generation not to be around by then. That was, um, that was actually a bet. Is uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in I East, you won East or London. Lost? I lost. <laughs> I was in the East London Barbers with my pal Izzy. Um, and uh, there was a few freaky haircuts that day. I went, I'll have one. A long story short, ended up ended up racing some fella outside of the barbers in East London that day. Uh, I can't remember that, whether I lost a bet or something, but anyway, one day I had that and it's haunted me ever since. <laughs> so the problem, now when I go into management and if any of my players have a silly yeah, haircut, what you got can no I say? Chance. I can't say nothing. <laughs> Let's move on to Mr Sean Wright Phillips. You had the yeah. same haircut from when he came out of the womb to today. It's never yeah. changed. Yes. Never changed. In fact, he hasn't even changed. He doesn't even age. He's Benjamin I know, Button. I know, it's annoying, ain't it? Go on, big, big Sean up. And I'll tell you one thing, Joe, as a City fan, and I've told yeah. this board Sean many times with this, but I used to have a season ticket, Main Road, and you know when we moved into what was Eastlands at the time and now the Etihad, and he used to make the best left backs in the world at the time. Ashley Cole and Wayne Bridge look silly. The biggest compliment you could play righty, and I play many compliments because I love him. When you speak to Ashley Cole and Wayne Bridge, who we're close to, I say, who was the toughest? Who's the toughest you play against? Mm. His name always comes up. Yeah, it's not Ronaldo, you know, not anyone else. It's, it's, it's Sean Mark Phillips, and I remember playing against him as a kid, and this speed that he had was just unstoppable. Look. Oh, this he is did, naughty, Sean, in the dark. Remember up. this one? Pop it through the legs. There, then bang down the side. He just, he had some that special magic where he could just drop a shoulder, beat a man at any moment. You know, scorer of great goals. You know, and it was a real pre ple pleasure to play with him. When when he came to Chelsea, um, we had a, one season sticks out in particular where, right, we actually switched positions. Like I was playing off the right wing. And Wrighty was playing inside, and we just we just had it off. It was just like 
I think it's where we've, we're, we're from the same sort of place. We play football the same way. And we just, we just connected. And he's one of them fans who watched him play loved it. Yeah. And, and the Chelsea fans loved watching him. The Man City fans loved watching him even more. And it was, you know, he's a natural... Natural born. And then he left off. us. He left us yeah. for twenty-one million pounds. He came back. You he came back. You he came sold back and he played it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Sean, what was it for you? Because like your pace was, and I, and I know you very well. And I know I can say this to you. But if you could cross the ball, you would have been, you would have been an England regular. You'd have had Beckham out the team, right? But you had that pace and you had that vision. Did and what did you rely on? Did did you almost like a snooker player think what you were going to do with that pace a few moves ahead? And no, no, um, it's all never, instinctive. Yeah, because you never actually know which way the defender is going to go until you move naturally. Mm. So it's kind of hard to plan because if you plan to go one way and he reads you, mm. then then what do you, you're kind of stuck. So you just work on the situation. So you're it, reading constantly. Yeah, what, yeah. It's just all, all the stuff, I just see gaps and I say, maybe it can work or maybe it can't. But we used to play as kids. Some people used to call it Wembley. Mm. We used to call it FA knockouts. And it was like one goalkeeper in between two trees and then you got... Mm. 10 or 15 kids. Mm. Nobody wants to come out first because that means they're in goal. But it's like knockout. So the last two are battling. It's, it's all solo play. Yeah. So it's all only on to all these. So there's 15 people. If I get the ball way down the other end of the green field, I've got to make it to those goals. How, how am I going to get there if I don't try and take on everybody <laughs> sort of thing? And that was kind of my mind frame. That's my target. Somehow I have to figure to get to that point so I can try and create a chance yeah. or to that point to try and create a shot. And uh, that's just what I went with. You were electric, Sean. It was a run, forest, run and, and the water boy, wasn't it? Just keep going and you just took on absolutely everyone and made them look silly, as I said earlier. Right, we picked you two up. And look, there'll be people watching the show all around the world, Joe, going, you haven't mentioned him, you haven't mentioned him, you haven't mentioned... I mean, Paul Gascoigne. We haven't mentioned yeah. Paul Gascoigne. We haven't mentioned David Silva. So let, let's do some honourable mentions. and Because, yeah. and, look, you guys came up with the list, so I'm putting the blame mm. over to you. Can I... I like, Gaz is my favourite player of all time, but... A lot of Gaza was pre Premier League with, yep. with Newcastle and Spurs. Point taken. Then he went to Italy. Then he went to Rangers. And then by the time he came back, he was on that curve of his career, which we've both been on. And you can't do yeah. like the things that he used to do. David Silva, I can't. I, that's one that I, I I would have put in there, but he missed out. I don't know. But again, is that one that doesn't because his personality kind of goes against him because he wasn't, you know, outrageous out there. He just got on with it, but he was so consistent with it. He was flair, more efficient he? rather than flary, wasn't he? Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. We used to call him the wizard. Well, if you're saying yeah. that, it's Mr. Yeah, we used to call City, him the wizard. Him off the, list. the wizard, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what we used okay, to Okay, David Ginola. That's my, that's, yeah. who, uh, that's the mention I would give. Like, yeah. coming, mm. like, you got to think of us two. When we, everything back then, when we was coming through as wingers, everything was so rigid. Yeah. It's like if you're right footed, you play on the right side. If you're left footed, you play on the left foot. Mm. So left side, sorry. Was when David Ginola came through, he was right footed playing on the left side. And for mm. me, apart from Perez, you never really saw that. Yeah. anywhere else for a while after. But the way he used to just drive at people... And glide past and just like, yeah. And he was quite big as well. He wasn't yeah. short like me and Joe. Mm. He was <laughs> like... He must have been closest 5'11", 6 yeah. foot. Long hair, he had everything model, like model looking. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was beautiful, wasn't he? He was beautiful. And he played the game that way as well. That's yeah. the thing. He played the game beautifully. Yeah. Like, he's just entertained. Yeah. Um, look, just throwing names at you and someone that you played with in Iron Robin. Oh, yeah, did, with Robin and Duff, Flair, yes, no? Very much so. Very much so. I mean, like, again, like, we had such a good team. We had so many options. And um, Robin, he just... I, I, I just think the Premier League was just too much for him physically. Yeah. He didn't thrive until he went to Munich, yeah, where he, yeah. he had that... You could have that rest. But one-on-one, -on -one, he was as good as anyone. Yeah. But in our team at Chelsea, you had to be able to do... Everything. Mm. And it goes back to, um, we talked about why players like, I think, Di Canio, Letizia wouldn't have been able to play in, in our Chelsea team because they could, I don't, I think it took too much of their game away from them, the flair, yeah. what there's, to, to, to lock into the way we're supposed to wait, all the, yeah. the tracking back, the running, the, the things like that. And Robin just, it, it, he was so explosive. It, trying to go up and down and defend, I thought, took a bit away from his game. Mm. When he went to Bayern Munich, but they control present possession 80% and he could just be that one-on-one -on -one guy, yeah. stand out on the right wing, get it cut inside goal. That was when he thrived. Premier League just, is, just misses out. And, and look, I get it. We're sort of picking someone here, aren't we? And you're going to pick that winner yeah. in a moment, but we're picking someone who did it consistently because you could say King Cladsey, obviously. I remember watching him at City mm. and that goal against Southampton. Uh, you know, you could say Adel Tarat. You could yeah. say Hatton Ben Arthur. 
you know, players. Yeah. But then, but then, you know, players that did do it consistently, Steve McManaman, Juninho. Yeah. I know we can't yeah. put everyone on the list, yeah. Shawnee, but there, there are loads of names when we think flair in the Premier League. Yeah, but I just really think when it comes to something like that, it's more personal preference, yeah. mm. to be honest with you, because like the list and the names that we've missed out, mm. they're all players that either deserve to be on that list or in some way be at the top of that list. Joe just hasn't put any Spurs fans on there. Yeah. <laughs> Jose Dominguez from the 90s, remember him? Jose was doing, was doing a bit. Listen, some of my favourite players that I love watching have played for Spurs, which is hard for me to admit. <laughs> Chrissy Waddle, Glenn Hoddle, yeah. Paul Gascoigne, <laughs> David Ginola. You know like, I'm saying. like, yeah. listen, there's no preferential treatment here. Right, just we've got 90 out. seconds left and we're going to get your decision. So, Sean, mm. coming to you first, your GOAT when it comes to Premier League flair players is who and why, sir? I'd have to go to Yeri Henry. Um, for me, especially at the time he was doing it, I think there was a stage in that season where... The Premier League was at its peak, especially with Invincibles, and the stuff that he was doing was pretty much stuff kids try to do on computer games and then try and emulate mm. it downstairs in, or on a green patch of grass. Yeah. So for me to do it there, I have to, I have to give it to TT. Joe, you've got the last 30 seconds. Franco Zola. I just think he just come lit the Premier League up. His goals, his skills, his smile. He's Italian, like you said, so yeah. he, he brought that coolness to it. Um, and the fact he was diminutive in stature gave me, as a kid who was not a big lad, and give me a, just, I can make it now. Because Franco's there and he can do it and he yeah. can do all that in his little body. I can do it now. So do we let you two just fight it out? Because we need an ultimate winner. Not no. going to agree. No, we can just, <laughs> we can have them both in the same team, so it's all right. Ooh, Franco <laughs> off of Thierry. <laughs> Flairy. I mean, if I had the casting vote, I'm going to say Georgie King Clancy just for the older days. But no, I take your point. Two very, very good candidates. Really enjoyed that with you two. And look, you were, as we said, flary little things back in your days. <laughs> well, <weren't> you? <laughs> Joe Cole, Sean Wright Phillips, thank you so much. Hope you've enjoyed that, everyone. There we go. Flair Players, Premier League on Goats. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.